My name is Kiki Akimbo. I'm a designer. I started designing in 2011. I live in Abuja. Abuja has been peaceful, quiet, and it's, it's completely different from every other place, places in Nigeria that I've lived in. My name is Kuti Joanolua Fumilola. I'm an event manager, and um, I own a small catering school. I went to school and I studied home economics education and rolled back into catering, and that was how I started catering fully. I'm Dorothy Njemanze. I am an actress. I am a race and stunt driver, an on-air personality. I MC events, pretty much. I'm an investigative journalist. It happened in 2012, in November. I was out at night with my friend, just right in front of our house, with my neighbor. And then it was, uh, it was late. It was, it was about 10, 11 p.m. 29th of September, 2012. 29th, I was to Angkor, Miss Ambassador for Peace Beauty Pageant. I was one of the anchors for the event that evening. The night of July 2014. It was in the morning, it was in the afternoon, around one o'clock to 2.30. I was in the market. I went to go and get myself a mixing machine so that I can help my work to be fast. The driver was very careless, like he just drove right in front of us and three people came down from the, the bus wearing black and I was, initially I thought they were kidnappers because of the way they were driving and because of the way they attacked us, you know? And then they, they didn't even let, let us say anything or they didn't ask any questions. When I got into the bus, I realized that it was just me that they picked up. They left the guy, that's my neighbor. Then he started pulling me really hard. I was like, wait, is this dude trying to kidnap me in front of everybody? So I turned and I started looking to signal somebody. And then he pulled me and he hit me. And now turned and noticed they're dragging all the girls. I parked my car behind a white bus. A man I didn't know who was wearing a shirt in the dark. He had a head warmer on and he grabbed my breasts. But while I was busy losing it and trying to find out why he would grab my breast, I was hearing enter this bus and he shoved me into the bus. There were soldiers who joined him as they're beating me, three soldiers, and they were fully armed. The three of them were fully armed. And they were beating me. One of them cocks his gun and says, enter the bus or I'll shoot. Justina saw what was happening, came out of the car and was shouting, what did she do to you that you people are doing that to her? These soldiers beat me like their fellow man. When they even beat me, I was good. I was very, very scared. I felt like they were even talking, they were even communicating. They were just like, don't say anything. When we get to that place, you will you know why you, you will know where you're going to. All sorts of things were just coming through my head. And I wasn't just thinking straight. I was crying. I was panting. I was in fears. I was with my phone, so immediately I called my mom. And I started calling people. So people were identifying me either as somebody resident around the place or an actress or Dorothy or Brekete. And I said, if you don't believe me, my ID cards are in the car. They say anybody can print an ID card. The people now said, okay, let them see how those people would overpower them and take me away. Fearing a possible mob attack, they left me. I said, no, you don't just call me and give me a complimentary beating and tell me to go. It doesn't happen. And then they put me in a hillock and they closed the doors. After sitting there for two seconds, I was like, wait, did these people even lock these doors? I opened the door and I came out. And then somebody noticed that I got out of the car, so they found me and they decided to slap the Jesus out of me. They, first, he was twisting my arm because I was struggling. He was twisting my arm, twisting my arm. And he was like, if you don't stop struggling, I'm going to break your hand. They had seized my phone at this time and one of them the APB people, not the, the, the policemen. One of them came to meet me and told me that, uh, you know, it's close to Christmas now, so we, we're looking for money. So if you cooperate with us, you know, you won't have to go too far. And then he sat in front of me and then put his hand on my, on my tie. You know, that was when I knew that, okay, first of all, I don't think we're even safe at all. My mom had called someone to get um, police officers to come and get me one, deserted classroom that's supposed to be their cell and then I overheard the policeman talking 
because I couldn't talk to anybody. I overheard the policemen talking to the other policemen that were there, and they were like, oh no, the policy here is once you've been picked, you've been picked. You can't do anything, they'll, you, 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 you face the judge. And I went to the police station that covers where the initial violations took place, which is the Wuse police station, Wuse zone three. On getting there, I said, I want to make a report. When I told them I wanted to report, the report was against Abuja Environmental Protection Board and Society Against Prostitution and Child Labor. Is it first of all, but what were you doing out at that time of the day? What was I doing out about that time of the day? No curfew. And I wondered, what's the war against women? We saw the, the um, tax force coming towards where we were. So as we were standing there, I just heard a sound. Boa, boa. I was not like, what's going on? They said they are busting people's tires. So there's this particular woman that parked her car very close to where I was buying my stuff. They now wanted to deflate the woman's tire. So the woman was begging, you know? She was begging and all of us were now begging. So there's a particular one that now came from behind, the police officer, I wanted to come and deflate because we were begging the one in front. So I quickly saw, I saw the one coming behind. And I now said, oh God, please now. I said, I just said, oh God, please now. The lady in my front now said, will you shut up and get out there? All of them just enter inside the shop, scatter everything. Even, carry even uh, stick, the night gear for a hand all over the body with the Koboko. If you want to get the video of what is going on, to tell you that they are here for a different mission, they will collect your phone and smash it. The soldier now came back again with a plank, with a branch of a plank, very fat, as big as my leg. He now came and was like, you have the God to be telling us, please. What was I to tell us, please? I was still looking for my money, he just came and started eating me again. He hit me on my hand this way and on my palm. Then at my back, you know, everywhere is just... Um, like they said, we had to wait to, to face the judge in the morning, a mobile court. The secretary of the mobile court came and told us that, you know what, all you need to do is plead guilty, pay three five and you'll go. They are saying they picked you up as a commercial sex worker and I should plead guilty for what I don't know anything about. Like, it's not, it's not normal for you to force people just because you want three, five. And everybody there did what she said. So I was the only one, when I faced the judge, I, I, I pleaded not guilty. Because one of the, the lawyers that were in court on that day kept telling me, how would I think that I can, you know, why would I even think I can go against what they do here. So I, 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 I pulled him aside and told him, I'm like, you are a lawyer, right? He said, yes, and that this is what they do. And I'm like, you don't know that people have rights? He said, there's nothing I can do. This is Abuja, this is Nigeria. I'm like, okay, no problem. I told him, you would hear from my lawyer after now. I, I, I'm sure they thought we were joking. I got my lawyer, um, I went to, Dodo and Co. and got Barista Kaona. We instituted an action in court for enforcement of the applicant's fundamental rights, right to personal movement and liberty. And the matter was filed in court in February 2012. The matter went on for about three, four months. And at the end of the day, the court agreed with us and enter judgment in favor of the applicant that her rights had been breached. We also sought an, a, a declaration that the AEPB lacks the powers to arrest prostitutes on the street because the AEPB can only function based on the powers it has in its act. And in its act, none of the function relates to picking up prostitutes on the street. And uh, at the end of trial, the court awarded two million naira's damages to the applicant for breach of her fundamental rights. The AEPB initially did not pay the two million naira. After some time, we went ahead to institute Ganeshi proceedings against the AEPB, and the application was successful. The court granted the Ganeshi application and awarded a further one million naira as in line with the uh, provisions of the law as um, cost of Ganeshi proceedings. So in total, the sum of three million naira was paid to the applicant.
I would have just, you know, forgotten about, oh, okay, whatever. I'm just one of the girls they picked up and that's it. But it's not, this country, we can still find justice, you know, and we all have our individual rights that we shouldn't ignore. No matter how big or small you are or who you think you know or who you think you don't know, there's still room for justice. In 2011, the Federal Capital Territory Administration, FCTA, declared what was called a total war against prostitution in Abuja, the rapidly growing capital of Nigeria. It swung into action patrolling the streets of the city through its agencies, the Abuja Environmental Protection Board, AEPB, and the Social Development Secretariat, SDS, with coordination from a non-governmental organization, the Society Against Prostitution and Child Labor in Nigeria, SAPCLAN. However, in their righteous quest of clearing the streets of women of easy virtue, women from all works of life became targets and a trend began to develop. Any woman could be profiled as a sex worker and apprehended with excessive force, detained overnight or over the weekend, and are sometimes molested. Um, I think it's um, the idea of it is courageous. But for a country that has not developed to an extent of monitoring what people do or those they put in power, it's a terrible, it's a terrible outfit. Actually, they normally came in the night in a group and operating as if uh, they are police force or as if they are attacking an armed robber. They will come here and arrest, harass everybody they saw here, catching them, telling them they should produce their ID card and other things. Even when they are drinking, they come in a group and be harassing people as if they are pushing a thief. At the end of the day, they will push them into their moto. And when they took them to run away, we learned that at the end of the day, they will collect money from them and release them. That's it. Don't be that che kuma a che ko ke ma che da sauran su ki fita kina irin wannan halin ba irin wannan halin bai da dadi mu munan hali ne don muka lura da yanda muke rayuwa jiki mu ba kawai mu fita muna ta sayarwa muna cinikin shi kaman kayan kasuwa bane babu ya kamata at least yan mace ta samu lokaci ta zauna ko da wani irin dai branch ne mace ta je ta zauna ta yi ya fi mata kan ta zo ta zauna tana bin titi we wanted to carry out a study on how women are being treated in Abuja. It was around the sex work community in Abuja. We took a study for three weeks with these sex workers to find out what are the human rights abuses that they face. About 70% of them, more than 70% of them, have actually had personal experience with maybe police or unknown groups, maybe a group of 12, 11 guys in a van or a jeep just come and say, hey, they gather them and maybe they have sex with them, they beat them up, they seize their phones, they use them to do some funny things like record them on videos. So if we don't look at the fact that they need to be protected, they, their, their interests need to be protected, then we've lost the point. When we turn a blind eye to the fact that sex workers are being mutilated and beaten on the streets, it now extended to our, you know, our sisters, our friends, you must have heard so many stories of girls who said, oh, I was trying to organize a party, I was crossing the I was crossing the road to use an ATM and some men came to meet me and they asked me to explain myself. And even when they show an ID card, I, oh, I work in the bank. These men still throw them in a, in, a, in a bus and they take them to somewhere else. Sometimes they, meet, they touch them in funny areas. They sometimes sleep with them, sometimes ask them for money. And these are critical human rights issues. They picked us from Barnes. When they picked us from Barnes, they took us to Osako, opposite Eden Garden. The police station is there. They took us to that place, but there is no policeman inside there. So they now ask us to pull off. When we pulled off, they started, they, some of us, they used protection, some of us, they didn't use protection. Society Against Prostitution and Child Labor, as the name proclaims, is a non-governmental organization, and it's been in existence for a little above five years now. And our mission, is to rescue our lost girls. We call them the lost girls. And then to take off the children you see on the street selling banana, pure water, and granite. Give them an alternative life. We'll go to AAPB, 
We follow them when they want to go and do it for uh, corporate beggars. We we'll cancel the people. Then when they wait for the girls in the night, in the morning we'll be there, we'll be cancelling them, talking to them and, you know, then we used to, one or two, just take them to any established salon, pay that they should learn there so that they can, you know, have some form of skill. We were called on board and then we were mandated to collaborate with two agencies. That's the Social Development Secretary that has the primary function of overlooking at, you know, supervising every social ease in FCT. And then the Abuja Environmental Protection Board that has that legal backing to remove and evacuate all nuisances off the street. They work with the police, road safety, uh, VIO, um, immigration, prisons, they work with all the forces. Um, SAPLAN, I think the Society Against Prostitution and Child Labour in Nigeria, I think it's an organisation, they are very empowered, they have money, they have bosses, they have staff. What they do is to see how they can get the sex workers out of the streets. My interaction with the sex workers has not been like this organisation has actually empowered them or helped them, but has actually made their situation worse by some of these people molesting them on the streets, some of them beating them up, pushing them, forcing them into these buses, taking them away from town. Some of these men even collect money from them, some people solicit sex from them. That's why I said it is not working. There are other people who have come forward, particularly Dorothy Njemanzi of the Dorothy Njemanzi Foundation, who's been harassed at least twice. It was her case that first brought, I first heard about that case, and that's what brought the issue to light for us. And we organized with the National Human Rights Commission uh, and some other activists in, in Abuja. We signed a petition, we sent it to the House of Representatives. They had a public hearing in March of 2003. At the public hearing, we had Abuja Environmental Protection Board there, and we had people, victims, who, were, who had been molested by Abuja Environmental, who were actually there as well. Um, unfortunately, the hearing didn't go anywhere because the House of Reps chair on public hearings insisted that for the hearing to go on, he needed the Attorney General of the Federation and the Minister of Women Affairs, who are not part of the petition. It's not clear what role they play, but if they wanted them there, then they should have invited them there. And pretty much that's where the case has stalled till now, because it just shows that there's a lack of interest in, in this issue, and women are not regarded as important enough to be dealt with or to be protected. Like you said, this case went as far as a, a house of public, a committee for public hearing. And he told the young lady who took us there to, please go and tell your fellow prostitute to stay off the street. All of you should shed your sword while we investigate further. Because from what you are presenting here, you know, you are saying you have uh, evidence, video evidence. Bring the video evidence, you say you have it, you bring it when it's necessary. Do you understand? You say they were touching your breast. You know, using words that I won't use in public. They were doing this. Eh? You agreed that, okay, where, what time did they see you say 2 a.m.? What decent woman will be out 2 a.m.? I think morality belongs in the home, in our faith. I mean, in our mosques, in our churches, maybe in the schools, we can talk about this. But it's not for you and me to use my standards. That is so dishonest, you know, trying to, 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 to you place yourself on a superior, like a pedestal, and then you're saying, this person is not, is not like me. And who says you're the standard? You know, this for me is the problem. For me, a society that condones women walking down the street being picked up and molested as being prostitutes. It's a society that shows clearly that they do not value women. They do not value femininity. They do not value their mothers. They do not value their wives. They do not value their sisters. They do not value any female relation that they have. Since we started this office, I will be honest with you, nobody has ever come to say, oh, I have a, I was molested by your officers or we were harassed, and this was what happened. So even when people make this allegation, when they investigate, they realize that, oh, it's not really, it's just the boss. Maybe they are not even the one inside the boss, because you just have one counselor who gives us a report. And their purpose of being the boss is to constantly remind the officers or whoever are working for that night, he's there to protect the interests of the girls. So if we are there to protect girls, why should it be us that will commit that crime again? 
The FCTA set up a unique multi-agency task force of nine law enforcement and government agencies, including the police, AEPB, and SAP clan, the non-governmental organization which provides logistic support. In the day, the task force pursues and arrests traffic offenders, corporate beggars, and other lawbreakers. At night, their main focus is on the arrest of alleged sex workers. Uh, this task force people, as I come to carry women, it's uh, it good, but something where they have said, sometimes they used to catch even workers. Sometimes if you are coming back for your work and you tell them, you tell them that you are coming back from work, ma, they will not believe you because as far as you are passing in this street, they will say you are a prostitute. So I don't know if, if they are doing a right work, it's not bad, but they are catching different, different people. The task force was not supposed to be about picking off young women from the streets. The task force is supposed to be about the protection of the federal capital territory as the capital city of Nigeria, the diplomatic capital of Nigeria, and the security capital of Nigeria. The situation in Abuja is unique. However, cases of gender-based violence by law enforcement and security agents are not uncommon across the country. And while domestic violence is still prevalent, violence against women by security agents is just as present. The people meant to protect victims and survivors. The worst day in my life was on August 7th this year, being Friday of the week. My daughter, a nine-year-old girl, raped her dead by an outer guard that walked closer to where we live. This doesn't for her to, for some hours. I could not even locate her and I could not discover her, her whereabouts. I could not endure. Then I went and report the case to the Abakwa police station that covered that our area. Then the police, they told me that that kind of case would not come onto the air until it's up to 24 hours. Then, till that time, till the following day, we could not discover her, we could not see her, we could not see her. Then we report to the police, and back to the police again. Then they gave, gave me some of the, the government, the officers there, for us to, to charge for her. Then, looking for her up and down, then we dis before we could discover her, that was the following day. Uh, and they already gave up the ghost, discover her lifeless. I would sustain some injury in her chain. Then they later discovered by themselves that they had been raped. Because they even came there before we saw her pant, where it was cured and dropped somewhere by the side. It happened last three years, 2012. That was on Friday, February. I was at home doing, I was cooking with my younger sister. When this police guy came, my younger sister's boyfriend came. So after cooking, I asked my sister to take the things inside. So later on, I was inside. I heard them saying something, I don't know. The next thing I could hear is that the guy now shot. You now shoot a gun, shot one on the hair. So I now come out and open the court. He said I should go inside, I should go and say my last prayer. I was like, what is going on? What happened? He said I should shut up, I should go and say my last prayer. And I asked my sister, what have you said to him? Or don't tell him that make him ups got upset. She said nothing. That was it. After that, I was begging him. I was leaning down crying, begging him. He said I should not say anything. The next thing you know, crop the gun. That is going to kill me. Kill my sister and shoot himself that none of us will go to court. That was what he said. So I thank God that I knelt down that day. So I was begging and I did like this. He not shot at me. At the federal level, before the Senate, we have a bill on violence against women, known as Violence Against Persons Prohibition Bill, the VAP Bill. It is the oldest bill since Nigeria's return to democracy. Since Nigeria's return to democracy, that bill was first sent in in 2001. This is 2014, 13 years. If it was a bill on oil, if it was a bill on defense allocation, if it was a bill on economic, on appropriation and all those things, that bill would have flown longest time. When I just get there, it was started touching my rapper, say, uh, me, he will, he will send me to jail. Me, I will never come back again. He started, it just started to be threatening me on this thing. That me, I know that I'm the causes of all this thing now. Six people have already in a cell because of what me I did. He said that if me had not agreed for what 
he want me to do. That he will send me to jail. What me I did not do, he will create what me I did not do for me because me I truly I didn't stay here. I grown up in Benin. Me I have not been to any police case like this in my life before, and the thing looked strange to me. I was afraid. After when he have already talked to me and be threatening me all those kind of things. After that, we, there's a room inside this office. He takes me to the place and he sex me in that place. Okay, the first time I went to court, when the judge or the judge was asking question, and the guy was like, eh, he did not shoot me intentionally, that it was a mistake, that it was a devil walk. When me I just get there, he was talking on the phone to somebody, is the, maybe he's there or guy in Abuja, I don't know. He was talking on the phone that ah, he was very surprised on what he see on Facebook now that so 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 he's better away in uh, this place he sleep with he um, that all those kind of things. He wants to hear the issue from my mouth. Maybe it's true or not. And I'll carry the Bible that I should take. I swear. When I swear, now I see I should explain how everything happens. And I explain to him. That was the time now sent for one police woman that should go and take my statement and give me the police reports. I've heard that the DP has already, he just stay in his cell for some times and they have released him. And he has, I heard that he has been working in another place again. We're supposed to treat our women with respect. We're supposed to treat them with kindness and love, tender love. Why? You won't catch Ashawo, catch both the Ashawo and, and, and the Ashawi. You won't catch prostitute. Arrest with the prostitute, patronize, customer, customer. Because if they stand for road, if beggars stand for road from morning till night, nobody give up. He come tomorrow, nobody give up. He go come again. Girl stand for road, one say body. She stand today, nobody come. Tomorrow, nobody come. She go. Uh, she, she go get transport to come out. You need institutions and people subject to rules. Whether you call them sub-clan, or you call them AEPB, or you call them Johnny Task Force, the mentality that makes people or institutions to believe that rules don't apply to them is what makes this possible. And it's also what endangers all of us as a country. One in three women worldwide will experience physical or sexual abuse in her lifetime. In Nigeria, only 23% of sexual assault cases are reported to the police. 77% of rape and assault cases are unreported. I feel like I'm floating through existence I feel like I'm living after time I feel like I'm forced to break the silence Is that a crime? Is that a crime? I feel like we're all following shadows and shadows that don't know where to go I feel like I'm waiting for tomorrow while today waste away It's not that I don't know It's not that I can't see It's not like I have noticed It's driving me insane It's not that I It's just the way I feel It's just the way I feel I feel like a child without a father And mama drives Oh Lord knows mama drives I feel like the world it's on my shoulder I wonder why 
wonder why 